welcome to Home Hive. I'm Kristen with Kristen Krebs Interiors, and I am going to be interviewing Jennifer Hartman from Turnkey Vacation Rentals. So let's go check it out. Hi, welcome to Home Hive. I'm Kristen with Kristen Krebs Interiors, and I am here with Jennifer Hartman from Turnkey Vacation Rentals and we're gonna talk a little bit more about vacation rentals. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, so um, tell me how you got into this industry. <laughs> oh boy, well, I think that just over the course of my career, I started out in um, hotels, in the hotel industry with Starwood Hotels, and then I transitioned into live events and sort of helping uh, with contracting of hotels and things like that. And I've been involved with short-term rentals for about the last five years. And I really saw from the hotel end of things how, you know, companies like Airbnb and HomeAway sort of ushered, you know, short-term rentals out of sort of a niche market and into the mainstream where they were competing with hotels toe-to-toe -to -toe and just sort of the shift in the entire industry. So it's been, you know, and then I ended up transitioning over to Turnkey <laughs> to get in on that action because it's a really exciting time for short-term rentals, definitely. Awesome. Very cool. So can you tell us a little bit more about Turnkey? I know you guys are very different than most other short-term rentals out there. You've got a ton of amazing technology. So Yeah, absolutely. So I think definitely what separates us from a lot of the uh, short-term rental property managers that are out there, sort of the uh, old guard way of doing things. Uh, obviously in San Diego, short-term rentals have been here since the existence of time, you know, in Mission Beach and whatnot. <laughs> so uh, Turnkey sort of sees the opportunity to have sort of one foot in like a fine hotel experience and one foot in the traditional short-term rentals. So we uh, we have a tablet in each of our homes. This is a really incredible tool. We utilize it in many different fashions. Um, on the guest side, they have sort of a digital concierge app that'll tell them about restaurants around them and you know different activities. And then this is also where any sort of instructions on how to use different features in the home will live. So this is where the Wi-Fi password lives and all that. It kind of takes the place of the old school binder that used to be in the homes, a little more high tech. And then from the property management side, we have a noise monitor inside of it and it is not recording, you know, any conversations or anything like that, but it measures the uh, decibel level of the noise um, in the home. So if it rises above the threshold that we set, then we get a notification and we are able to proactively handle that before neighbors would be impacted um, and things like that. Then we also utilize it to help us do photo verified housekeeping. So the housekeepers, um, we come in, we do beautiful photos obviously for the listing, but we take a really detailed set of photos um, that's like the inside of toilet bowls, the inside of the microwave, things that could be missed in housekeeping. And then the housekeepers have to come through and go through a very detailed checklist and they use the tablet to take a photo to match each one of those and those get submitted to our team in real time so we can really verify between each stay that the homes are being cleaned to the highest standards and then we also i think everyone's you know using the digital locks at this point but uh, we have proprietary technology that allows us to issue one-time use codes that are only active during the duration of a guest stay or um or for vendors as well pretty much Anybody who's not the owner has a unique code every time they enter the house. Um, so that's great. And then we also put our uh, uh, wireless router in the homes. And uh, this is my favorite thing. Um, so it acts as a gateway between the uh, homeowner's Wi-Fi network and the guest. And what it does is it, it enables us to monitor how many devices are trying to connect to the Wi-Fi at any given moment. <laughs> so if four people are supposed to be in the home and suddenly 25 devices are trying to connect to the Wi-Fi, we can tell that, you know, those are cell phones and something's probably about to take place that shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so that's the technology we've incorporated in the home. We, we also have technology on the back end as well. We utilize dynamic pricing like the hotel and airline industry. So we fluctuate rates up and down um, based on, you know, a number of factors, uh, seasonality, and it helps us maximize, you know, revenue for our homeowners. And uh, yeah, that's most of the technology side. Also, you know, we are on about 55 different platforms. So we have technology that syncs all of those calendars. 
so that there's you know uh, the ability to market on a really high level without uh, you know worrying about double bookings and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome, that's incredible. <laughs> um, all right, very cool. So um, tell me a little bit more about you. Like how how did you end up? I mean, you you worked in a couple other industries um, that kind of relate to short term rentals. Yeah, but absolutely. Tell me. So uh, I've split my whole adult life between Austin and San Diego. And when I was in Austin, I worked for a company called South by Southwest. It's a, I don't know if you know what it is. Well, for your, <laughs> know, but... for your listeners and your viewers, it's yeah. a, one of the largest film, music, and interactive conferences in the world. Um, and I was part of their uh, housing department, which we would contract with about 65 different hotels all you know any hotel within a six mile radius of downtown we controlled about 75 percent of their inventory but when we started to hit that point where short-term rentals really burst into the scene um, we were seeing the hotels sort of be impacted by that and at first they thought it was a fluke and of course it wasn't a fluke um, <laughs> so we as they were taking a hit we were taking a hit we were trying to figure out scramble kind of like the hotels are um, to how do we get, how do we make this work? Um, because there are not enough hotels in downtown Austin to support the conference. So we went out and we found companies like Turnkey um, that had inventory in the downtown area and we contracted with them. And when we came across Turnkey, they were just so much easier to deal with, so much better, everything was smarter. You know, so we were really impressed by that. And then I basically just stalked the company for like <laughs> nine months. I crashed their Christmas party and <laughs> made, made sure I could rub elbows with the CEO, dance on over to the, oh, who's the sales director? Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and then basically we, you know, I was planning to move back to San Diego. And so I, you know, committed to that last season of South by Southwest. And then I, as the week after, when you're in that uh, festival life, as soon as you are about three months out, you just eat, breathe, and sleep. Nothing but that. It's like 16 hour days for everybody. And um, so I kind of put it aside. And then a week after South by Southwest was over, I took a look at their site just to see what was going on. And they had posted the position for San Diego. And so, <laughs> and so it was just perfect timing and so I was like me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah and I just came out and I've been you know working on meeting people like you and, and really getting reestablished back into the real estate community so that you know we can make a, a big splash um yeah. turnkey has been in San Diego since 2015 okay um Oops. so they've been here for a little while so we're a little bit established but really just you know trying to make sure that we're you know out there and people know the differences between you know what we do and what yeah. competitors do yeah it is a big difference, especially if you're in the real, uh, you know, short-term rental industry. I mean, the kind of technology that you provide is incredible. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It really helps. So <laughs> how many properties do you have in San Diego? We have just under 100. Oops. We also have a couple of properties in Temecula. Temecula is a really new market for us, but man, is there opportunity. <laughs> um, so we're uh, onboarding our sixth home right now, and we are in talks with several others. But in San Diego, we have a pretty big chunk all the way from Oceanside down the coast to pretty much the border. We have some in Imperial Beach and then all the way inland to Temecula. So we're kind of sprinkled all in there. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So for viewers who want to do short-term rentals, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, if you have a property already that you're interested in short-term renting and it isn't a brand new build, invest a little bit of money to make you know thoughtful updates because this is how you really maximize your revenue in this space. Um, it can make quite the difference. If you are able to put in you know, granite countertops and stainless steel appliances in your kitchen and a subway tile backsplash and give a couple of updates to your bathrooms, that goes a long way in the way that it's photoed and also the way that we can market it. And um, you know, there's been a lot of studies and one came out last week and guess, you know, uh, their, their number one, uh, you know, thing that they're looking for uh, when they're choosing where they want to stay is the kitchen. So invest money into your kitchen. <laughs> if you haven't bought a property yet, then make sure when you're looking around and you find one that you're really interested in that you uh, either reach out to me directly or a person like me that can give you a, an annual revenue projection that will tell you, um, you know, exactly what the revenue potential for that particular property is so that you can make a really educated decision on what 
you want to buy. But yeah, mainly just to make sure that you make updates because that is what people are looking for. The demographics have shifted quite a bit um, as far as who is staying in short-term rentals. Now that short-term rentals compete with the hotel industry and we have hotel guests staying in short-term rentals, um, expectations have risen to the level of a hotel stay. So having you know a good property manager, um, it's a lot of work. You can do it on your own, but <laughs> it takes a lot of time. So if you have a, a good property manager that provides some extra details like toiletries and things like that, um, that's what guests are looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can attest to that too. I mean, I work with a lot with short-term rental owners, and um, yes, there are definitely some some things that they can do to improve their property to get more bookings. Yeah. Like, um, investing in like sofas or beds, because those are the things that people sit on the sure. most, you know, they're going to have the most interaction yeah. with those items. So, you know, you can go a little bit cheaper on the tables and like maybe dining chairs, because they're not really going to sit in those for very long, but yeah, they're going to sleep on the bed, they're going to sit in the sofa, and it does make a difference. You know, you'll, you'll get a, you know, five-star review versus yeah. a four-star review. Absolutely. So, you know, they could say the bed's too stiff or, you know, whatever their excuses, but you know, it, it definitely makes a difference. And if you're not design inclined, it's not a bad idea to hire an interior designer when you're going through to furnish an empty place like Kristen. Um, we work with her a little bit. I've been able to refer a couple of people her way and the clients all have, you know, nothing but great things to say. And it really can make the difference. It's an extra cost up front, but you know, that extra attention to detail can, you know, bump your revenue, you know, 10 to 20 grand annually, depending on where your home is. So it's worth yeah. it to invest a little bit of money up front. Definitely. Yeah. It pays off almost immediately. Absolutely. The first year it covers itself. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. does. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell our viewers, especially about short term rentals? Yeah, it's just I think that we're you know, we're on a trajectory trajectory that is uh rising rapidly. I think that they're projecting, you know, still another thirty percent to climb. So um, you know, it's a really exciting space to be in and I highly recommend, you know, if people are looking for you know, something good to invest in that is, you know, sustainable, um, that it's a really great way to go. If you have the property and you're renting it out short term, you're able to earn the revenue off of it. And you're also earning equity in your house. Um, and with the updates, keep in mind that you're also, you know, it's not uh, money out the window, even if you decide to long term rent it or sell the home, you know, at any given point, you are raising the property value. So really, I just would encourage people to look at this. You know, I know that there's a lot of exciting stuff in San Diego, especially happening with ADUs and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so yeah, look into it. Uh, dip a toe in the water. <laughs> Call a real estate agent. Contact someone like me and, you know, uh, get some advice on the areas to look at and, you know, the size of homes. I will say, you know, um, as a general rule of thumb, if you haven't bought yet, uh, Three bedrooms or above are going to uh, be the way to go because families, families are, you know, the biggest demographic that stays in short term rentals and, um, you know, they need that extra bedroom. And then the only other thing that I want to say is I think that there's a lot of um, it, this can be a hot button topic, you know, right? <laughs> like we've seen some different conversations happen with the regulatory stuff and uh, I think that it's good for viewers to, or listeners, to do a little bit of research because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there that having a short-term rental in your neighborhood, you know, uh, makes crime increase. It doesn't, it decreases. Um, it, there's a common misconception that your home value decreases. It doesn't, it increases by a lot, yeah. <laughs> you know, so really just sort of um, educate yourself. and. I, I know that there's people on both sides, right? There are homeowners that are using this to make a living and then there are also, uh, you know, people in their neighborhoods that are nervous. Um, so really, I think that the industry needs to shift to a sort of middle ground. And that is what I think um, turnkey is, is the middle ground. You know, we see the opportunity to help owners with, uh, you know, make revenue and, you know, take care of their homes, take care of the guests, you know, create a really fine um, experience for everybody. Um, uh, but it's also important, you know, to acknowledge that people are nervous, you know, because it's sort of new and it's rapidly increasing and people are worried about changing, you know, the, uh, the character of their communities and 
they have this uh, idea that every short-term rental is going to be a scene from Animal House. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly families. And if you have, um, you know, if both sides are invested in finding that middle ground, you really shouldn't be able to tell if your next door neighbor is an owner or a long-term tenant or a short-term tenant. And I think that we can get there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, I can attest to that too. I mean, having cleaners with your team come in every so often, whether it be every week or every you know couple of weeks or whatever the, the stay rate is, um, you know, that helps keep the property clean. You yes. know, somebody's there all the time, constantly making it look aesthetically pleasing. So therefore the value in that area yeah. goes up. And, you know, you're not only helping spur on the economy with the tourists who come in who spend money, mm-hmm. but, you know, you're you're also allowing people an alternative for travel. I know there are a lot of people, especially with uh, maybe like health needs or something like right. that, where they can't stay in hotels. So short-term rentals are a great alternative for those kinds of people that need that those kinds of accommodations. Yeah, so. absolutely. And families yeah. who, you know, are staying for 10 days and have, you know, three or four kids and they need to have a kitchen and not just like a small, like efficiency kitchen in a <laughs> hotel, like a full-blown kitchen and, you know, just giving them the opportunity to have the privacy that a short-term rental brings that a hotel doesn't, you know, Mm -hmm. an easy check-in experience with a digital lock where they don't have to deal with a front desk, you know, person or anything like that. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely valuable. And also it's sustainable from the aspect that, you know, these are existing assets. So Mm -hmm. it isn't, you know, it doesn't require building a hotel. You know, these are homes that are out there that Uh, You know, in some cases, in places like La Jolla, you know, homes that sit empty nine months out of the year because they're vacation properties for the owners. So, you know, it really it really is helpful to be able to utilize homes as STRs. Yeah. Yeah. And provide jobs. Yeah, absolutely. For people like me. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you've got the cleaners, you've got the property managers, you know, that you are helping the economy. So. I think that's a great, yeah, great way to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we work with a, you know, a lot of vendors. I think maybe people don't think about what goes on behind the scenes, but right, we have housekeepers, you know, gardeners, pest control, you know, um, interior designers. <laughs> and some uh, instances we have, you know, uh, we, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's people out on the satellite. Yeah, that we contractors. Like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Depending on yeah. where the home, what phase the home is at. But yes, it, some of them we come in really early. And so, yes, exactly. Contractors, interior designers, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about before? Well, maybe we can have a little, small discussion about like what's happening with ADUs, which I know is more your yes. expertise. So if you want to talk a little bit about it and then maybe we can talk about how um, short term rentals sort of fit into that. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I did have a quick question about that. Sure. So for... For short-term rentals, is, are there certain pockets within San Diego area that, that you see the most um, beneficial or most lucrative? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, top is obviously La Jolla. Um, Bakers Hill is, you know, close uh, second. And then obviously Mission Beach and PB are, are great areas. Um, so I guess it depends on what your budget is. Mm-hmm. So if you have, you know, a million dollars to spend, then... I would look in La Jolla because you can probably find something that's a three bedroom in decent proximity to the ocean. Um, if your budget is a little more conscripted, then um, PB is a good place to look. And um, yeah, mostly along the coast, but also Bankers Hill. Yeah. <laughs> it really, it's really great. It's just centrally located between Balboa and you know downtown and the beach, and so people yeah. tend to like the homes that are in that area. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That was one that kind of threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting Baker Hill right? to be one of the top areas. It's just because of the convenience factor. Cause I know, yeah. I mean, right. You have like the planes overhead and all that. No, it doesn't bother people. There's so much to do right around there, you know, and it's only like, you know, a 15 minute tops drive, you know, to any of the beaches really. Yeah. So I think that it's just a popular place to stay. Plus I think that in that area, a lot of the homes tend to be updated and, um, and that's what people are looking for. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the great thing about doing these ADUs is that, um, or uh, anybody who doesn't know what an that. ADU is, is additional dwelling unit or accessory dwelling unit. It's essentially what we call granny flats. 
Um, so they're a great opportunity for short-term rentals. Yeah. Um, if they're allowed, of course, right. there are certain areas that are going to restrict them. But like La Mesa is an area as of right now um, that is allowing them and actually encouraging them yeah. um, to kind of help spur on the economy and give more jobs and things like that. So, you know, it is definitely is a great opportunity and it's a great way to make some income. You know, I mean, you, you said that the what is the statistic on that? Do you know with the short term rental versus the long term rental, how much more you can get from a short term rental? Oh, it really it fluctuates a lot uh, depending on the specific area. In some areas, it's a, it's twice it's twice. Yeah. yeah. Twice. So, um, but in some areas it's, it's less, it depends on, you know, what specific area we're talking about and, you know, whether it is as popular of an actual sought out vacation destination versus, uh, you know, some of the areas that are a little further out from either the beaches or, or, um, other sort of tourist destinations where people will stay because, you know, it's a little more inexpensive. Um, but yeah, so it can be as much as, you know, 30%, I would say, to 50%. Um, and in some instances, it's, uh, you know, it's double. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Wow, let us know where those double there is. Yeah. La Jolla. La Jolla, Again, honestly, in a lot of places, it, it, is, it is double as long as you have a really, you know, updated high-end. Well, it doesn't need to be super high-end, but... You know, thoughtful updates. Yeah. In most yeah. cases, it, it is about twice as much as what you can earn from a short term renter. And again, um, three bedrooms and up. You know, I feel like two bedrooms and below, you start to shrink those margins just mm -hmm. because the demographics of um, who a, a, a two or a one bedroom would work for is smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it can be it can be quite a bit. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for coming absolutely. On. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Yeah. This is super fun. <laughs> this was great. I hope it was informative for everybody listening and watching. <laughs>Wow, that was an awesome episode with Jennifer Hartman from Turnkey Vacation Rentals. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, whether it be for short-term rentals or ADUs. Um, and thanks so much for our sponsor, Home Hive Academy. I'm Kristen with Kristen Krebs Interiors.